This is Scott from KIG. It's Sunday, February 28th, and we're going to take uh, two or three videos, runoff videos, of this Donaldson Ultra Filter 10 ton air cooled chiller. Uh, this is one of two that we're shipping to a customer in uh, California. The first one's already shipped. Uh, model UC 0240 SP, serial number 47704. This particular unit built in 9 of 08. It's a 460 volt unit. Um, uses R134A. These units actually uh, can go low temperature, low fluid temperature, which is what this customer wants. They also have low and high ambient, meaning it can uh, work outside in ambient conditions uh, minus 20 up to about 120. Um, for the amount of cooling capacity uh, these units are very impressive in that they're not physically too big and they achieve that in two ways one with this high powered uh, condenser fan which actually see two wires going in there actually has an integrated uh, variable frequency drive within the motor uh, which helps for head pressure control particularly if on, on colder uh, colder days and the other way is with what they call micro channel condenser coils which are really not that thick um, and they use two of them. In this case here this is the chiller that we installed a brand new condenser for. You can actually see over here in our shop the uh, old condenser had a break there. We probably could have uh, repaired that. Really wasn't the right thing to do especially if um, the thing, if this thing's going to travel cross country. So this is uh, the first of, I think, three videos. Just gonna, um, uh, in this unit, the side covers have to be on uh, to run appropriately, but this is just our first video showing some of the components on the inside. We have our 10 horsepower Copeland compressor, refrigerant pressure switch. We have our refrigerant dryer, the insulated uh, reservoir tank, and we do have the lid for it. We don't have it on during the test. Uh, this is your float switch, um, that is a uh, uh, float or, or, or a tank level switch I should say. We, uh, get, we uh, just have it raised up a little bit for the test because we don't have the, uh, the tank 100% full. The tank has to be about 2 or 3 inches or, or just about at that uh, below that drain level um, or else that float switch will, will turn on. Um, this uses a really nice high end Grunfos pump. Um, that pump is insulated. If you see that little slot there in the insulation, that's important. When you do start this up, uh, that's where you can peek in with a flashlight and with two people bump the pump just for a few seconds to confirm that we have the right phase rotation. Uh, we have our plate frame heat exchanger here. Uh, one thing about these units also nice is they have an inline uh, filter. I guess hence the name Ultra Filter for their, uh, for their chillers. Um, and so that's nice, so you don't need a Y strainer. Uh, you do have to check that filter uh, regularly. In fact, um, we have two new liquid filled pressure gauges coming in. This is for pump pressure and this is for pressure drop over the filter. A little note here that says if it gets above uh, 22 PSI, that's when you should change the uh, filter. So for this test here, um, just keep in mind these, these are going to be replaced uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow they're doing. Um, in this uh, chiller here, we, it already has uh, shutoffs for the inlet. You see this sticker here coming in. This is the inlet to the chiller, and you need a uh, some type of sturdy, um, correctly rated hose, uh, one inch uh, one inch hose for the inlet and outlet of this chiller. But it's nice. We already have a shutoff here, and then down below here on the suction side of the pump, you already have. A shutoff here. Oh, I'm sorry. The, this is the output side of the pump. Uh, you have a shutoff here also, and it already has a built-in bypass here. You can choose to add your own bypass, but coming up from uh, teeing off the uh, inlet to the filter, you already have this flow bypass, which comes down and tees in here um, at the pump. The suction side of the pump is here that draws. That draws off the tank, and here is your thermal uh, thermal expansion valve. Um, 
in each chiller, the first one they're already shipped out. Uh, because it's not exactly perfectly intuitive, we just printed out this little cheat sheet here, how to change the set point. It looks like a lot, but after you do it three times, you'll never have to look at it again. And the only other thing to keep in mind is just notice here, in addition to this nice schematic of how the chiller flow, heat exchanger, condenser, pressure switches, and so forth, which is another nice thing about Donaldson. Um, in fact, that little symbol there is what represents that bypass I just mentioned on the inside. Um, just notice in addition to the power disconnect here, uh, to turn on and off, you basically hold this first button here uh, for five seconds. We got the fluid heated up to about 49 or 50. When I do turn it on in the next video, after I get the covers on, uh, you'll probably see an HT symbol which just says it's hot compared to the relative uh, to the set point. In fact, we're going to show you how to change the change the set point too. Uh, for a load, we usually have a air handler, um, a heater in the room. Sometimes we actually blow extra heat onto the uh, onto the air handler to get a higher load. And we have tested this for about three or four days now. We're hoping we can ship this unit out uh, uh, tomorrow to the customer if everything works out. Um, so we'll come back to video number two in a second.